Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and much appreciated everybody taking a little time to check today's video out. Today we're going to give you guys sort of a full tutorial, a little seminar on fishing points, main lake and secondary points, because in my opinion they are the number one bass structures uh, all year long really, but especially during uh, the early spring like February, March. But I want to give you guys sort of an overview that sort of helps you get a better understanding and how to approach points. I think it's going to add up to a lot more fish for you guys moving forward. Um, just want a qu quick reminder, guys, uh, if you haven't had a chance, please swing by and check out our Fish of the Moment Lake Map Breakdowns. I've been working on these forever. Um, we've got all of our spring map uh, breakdowns uh, up on the site right now. I've broke down almost every major lake in the country. Um, we do personal breakdowns. If you've got a little lake you want us to create one for, and it's just a really good resource to learn more about any lake that you want to learn more about. If you don't know much about a lake, or even if you do, um, it gives you some good insights uh, to uh, uh, approaching that lake the next time you're out there. So I'll, I'll put the Fish the Moment link in the description here. You guys can check that out. So thanks, thanks a lot on that. Okay, guys, if you all have watched my channel very long, or if you've ever gotten a Fish the Moment Lake Map Breakdown, you can see I talk about points a lot. I mean, they're, they are a major focus of my entire bass fishing approach. And for good reason, guys, points are, I think they're, I think they're the number one bass structure that there is period on any lake. Not just, it doesn't matter if it's a man-made lake or a natural lake, points are natural fish attractors and all year long for that. So, um, I, I don't want to, I don't, I'm not going to break down like every single season cause that'd take hours to do, but I wanted to give you an overview to help you understand why points are so effective and maybe throw some stuff in there that you can use right now this time of year. So first of all, um, one of the reasons that points are so good is the way they're, they're situated and the way they're positioned on lakes across the country. Now you got some points that are just that they're just points that come out into the water. You've got some points, which, uh, a lot of the points, are the points that lead that are, are like the main lead back into a cove or a creek arm. Um, and you've got some secondary points that are back in the creeks and coves that create irregular features. And that's just what they are. They're irregular features and bass. You're going to find out that bass love anything irregular. That's they're just attracted to cover and anything that uh, provides something different in the landscape. Another reason the points are so good, is they provide access to deep water most of the time. I mean, most points that you have, whether it be a main lake or secondary point, uh, they, you know, even if they have to run way out into the lake, eventually there's some deeper water out off of those points. And real quick for everybody that doesn't, may not be real familiar with it, a main lake point is exactly that. It's a point of land that's uh, positioned on the main body of the, of the lake that you're fishing. And a secondary point is like a point that is back in a creek arm or maybe a point that is inside of a cove. So that's, that's the two differential points on there. And like I said, bass use both of them extensively. Now here's the thing about, here, here's sort of a foundational element I want to start you guys off with points. On every point that you have, bass will use that point differently based upon a, a couple different factors. They use the point differently based upon the angle of the point, um, the water clarity in the lake, and time of year. They're, those those are the three main factors. In my opinion, the most important factor in determining how to approach a point is on water clarity. Because if you've got, it, you know, water clarity applies to points like it does in anything else in bass fishing. The dirtier the water, the shallower the fish are going to be. And that's the same on points. If you have a dirty water lake where the water visibility is say, you know, under a foot and a half or so, most of those fish on those points, on the points are gonna be shallow on those points, you know, under five foot of water. They're gonna be, you know, bank related. Now, as the water clarity increases, those fish will not only use deeper water on the points, they'll, can, they'll gradually move out to deeper parts of the points but they will also suspend off those same points. So if you have a, let's, let's just take one extreme from the other. If you've got a dirty water lake, like the water visibility is under 12 inches or so, those fish are gonna be up on the point of that, on the bank of that point or in less than five foot of water most all year long. But if you've got a real clear water, say you've got a, a lake like 
uh, you know, Bull Shoals Lake in Arkansas where you have 15 foot of clarity, on those same points, you may have fish suspended out, you know, 30 or 40 foot deep over 80 or 100 foot of water. So it's, again, it's all relative to the water clarity and how deep the water is off the point. So that's, that's one of the considerations that you have to take in before you uh, decide how to fish a point. And again, the water temperature as far as will dictate the technique. We'll go into that just a little bit. So here's, here's the thing that is sort of like um, challenging to a lot of people as the water gets clear, because if you go to like one foot clarity, two foot, three foot, four foot, five foot, what you're gonna have is you're gonna start having a mix of fish on those same points. You're gonna have some of the fish on the bottom, living on the bottom, on when, around the breaks or on the brush or on the rocks or whatever. And then on those same points, you're gonna have some fish suspended. So let's just say, for example, you're on a, a lake like down here at Table Rock Lake where I'm at, you may pull up to a main lake point and you may graph around out in 80 or 90 foot of water and there's some fish suspended 20 to 40 foot down off of that point and yet you can move up to the same point and get in 10 to 15 feet of water and catch them on the bottom like on a Ned rig or something like that. So bass will suspend and they will use the bottom on the exact same points at the exact same time um, on lakes that have a little bit cleaner water. Now another thing about a point that you have to understand is when, when people look at a point, um, there's a visual that comes off the bank that they can see, but a lot of the points, like I said, you have to look at them from your GPS mapping. A, a point may ne not necessarily be visually defined, but you know, on your mapping, you can read it out really good. It could be a long underwater shoal that comes out there, but regardless, even if the point is visible or if it's not visible, you have three parts to a point. You have the point itself, which is the very end part of the point, and then you've got the point sides, the point end right here and the point sides. Now, it's been my experience that bass use the sides of the points more than they do the ends of the points. And again, it doesn't take anything for a bass to swim very far. If, you, if you're a bass, a lot of people say, oh, these fish are they're going to be out here in deeper water off the end of this point and as it gets warmer they're going to move shallow i don't believe that too much because it doesn't take seconds for a bass to swim 100 yards so they can move around fish quicker than they want to but i think what happens is a lot of these fish roam these points all the time depending upon the time of the day and the conditions you have if you've got a bright sunny day with not much wind hold on guys sage is digging in the yard i gotta go get her just a second okay guys i'm back I swear my poor yard out there between sage our dog digging for moles and we have eight chickens and the chickens eat grass so these chickens will come through and scratch up the yard all day long looking and eating grass they have dug up the yard and plucked grass i've got hay all over it trying to and then if i put grass seed down those dang chickens eat the grass seed so i don't know if they're worth all the eggs they put out or not as far as the yard maintenance but okay anyway back to the the point thing so um, let, let's get back on the same point thing. So basically what you're, what you're saying that there's different conditions that will affect, affect the depth and how those fish position on those points, because a cloudy or a bright sunny day, the fish will position differently. And on a cloudy windy day, the bass will also position differently. So in my opinion, what they do is you've got a population of bass that live on these points most all year long. And they're going to simply roam around and use different parts of the points based upon feeding opportunities. I mean, if there's a lot of shad out over deeper water, they could be out there suspended. If there's a lake that's got a larger crawdad population, they'd be on the bottom. If you're fishing a lake that has good drop-offs and stuff on it like that, they could live on those drop-offs or if people planted brush. But in general, um, they're going to use whatever is the most... Um, uh, the, the most opportunistic part of that point for them to feed on. So when you're looking at a point like that, you always have to say that the fish are going to be there. That's one of the things I do on my on the water trips. And when we're fishing jerk baits is we'll pull up to a point and even without live scope, since I don't use it, I'll just tell them, I said, guys, I said, bass, I, I'll, I'll pull up to like one point. So I, you know, I probably caught 5,000 bass off this one point in the last 50 years. And, I can tell them, I said, every cast that you have out there, you're 
you've got a fish looking at your jerk bait. He may be 20 foot away from it or five foot or five inches away, but it's just triggering that fish to bite. And that's one of the few places on the lake that you can say that. A lot of different places on the lake, bass are transitional in there and they don't use those, those structures all year long, but points are one of those particular areas that they do. So anyway, without getting into this big hour long seminar, guys, here, here is the overall gist I wanted to give you on this. And I'll, maybe I'll do an hour seminar at some point on it, is let the water clarity and the uh, proximity of deep water determine how you fish that point. I mean, that's the whole key on there. I mean, if you're on a steep point, you know, obviously you're gonna be closer to the bank. And if you're on one of those long flat points, you may be a quarter mile out into the lake before you get off to the end of it where it drops into deeper water. Every point is unique to itself. And um, every point has to be approached, you know, such based upon the set of conditions. Now your conditions like your water clarity and your water temperature and your sky conditions are gonna change day to day but the, the physical structure of the point, as far as the rock composition and the drops are never gonna change with that. In general, I'll follow up this for a little tid tidbit to give you guys for this time of year. Concentrate on your secondary points in early spring right now. Secondary points are one of the first places that big female bass use to stage before spawning. So I don't fish as much main lake stuff this time of year as I do at the secondary points. So, Anyway, just a quick overview, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back. That's a good topic. We'll do an hour-long seminar on this sometime and uh, give you guys lots, of, lots more juice on that. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't. We'll talk later.